Chapter 10, How to Steal a Dog. Shh. I put my finger to my lips and motioned for Toby to stay behind me. We tiptoed along the hedge in front of the big brick house. When we got to the gate, I scanned the street and then whispered to Toby, You better be the lookout. If anybody comes outside or a car comes or anything, you whistle like I showed you this morning, okay? Toby nodded. I peered over the gate. The front door of the house was closed. I glanced toward the driveway. No car. The yard was empty and quiet. Here, Willie. I called out real soft. Nothing. Maybe he was inside. I wondered if I should go on up to the porch. Probably not. If somebody was home, they were liable to see me. Maybe you should whistle, Toby whispered. Okay. I whistled one time and waited. Sure enough. Willie stuck his head out of that little doggy door when he saw me. He dashed out the door and up to the gate. Hey, Willie, I whispered, sticking my hand through the gate to pet him. He stood on his hind legs and put his front paws on the gate. His tail wagged so hard his whole body wiggled. He licked my hand like it was a T-bone steak. You want to come with us, I said. He cocked his head and peered up at me, and then I swear he nodded his head. If he could have talked, I was sure he would have said, heck yeah, I want to come with you. So quick as I could, I lifted the latch on the gate and opened it just enough to reach my arm in. My heart was pounding so hard, all I could hear was the thump, thump, thump in my ears. I knew I had to keep myself moving or else I was liable to start thinking. And if I started thinking, I was liable to think I shouldn't be doing this. So I turned my mind to off and grabbed Willie's collar. I pulled him through the gate and out onto the sidewalk. He kept wagging his tail and looking at me with his shiny black eyes. I took the string out of my pocket and tied it to his flea collar. Okay, let's go, I said to Toby and took off running. I ran down Whitmore Road, around the corner and into the woods. Willie ran along beside me. Every now and then he leaped up on me or nipped at my heels like this was the most fun game he had ever played. Once in a while, he'd let out a little yip. When we were far enough into the woods that I was sure no one could see us from the road, I stopped to catch my breath. I put my hand on my pounding heart and leaned against a tree. Toby ran up and stopped beside me. We did it, he hollered. Shh. I clamped my hand over his mouth. Somebody might hear us. You've got to be really quiet. Willie sat in front of us with his tongue hanging out, panting. His tail wagged on the ground. Swish, swish, swish. I knelt down and ran my hand along his back. He closed his eyes and leaned against me. Excuse me. It's okay, fella, I said. Don't be scared. Me and Toby are nice. He scratched behind his ear with his hind leg, making the tag on his collar jingle. Well, what do we do now? Toby said. We take him over to that house and tie him up on the porch. What if he don't like it there? He's just going to be there for a little while, I said. As soon as his owner puts up the reward sign, we'll take him back home. Oh, Toby knelt and rubbed the top of Lily's head. What if the owner don't put up a reward sign? I flapped my hand at Toby. Trust me, that lady is going to want him back more than anything. She's probably making a reward sign now. I made my voice sound calm and sure, but a funny little feeling was tapping at my insides. A feeling like maybe I had done a really bad thing. I took a deep breath, trying to swallow that feeling down and keep it from growing. I unbuckled Willie's green collar and tossed it into the bushes. Tap, tap, tap. There was that feeling again, tapping at my insides like it was trying to tell me something. What'd you do that for, Toby said. I rolled my eyes. Think about it, Toby. Toby's eyebrows squeezed together and he bit his lip. Because he don't need it anymore, he said. I sighed. No, Dumbo, because we can't take him back to his owner with his collar on. Or else she'd wonder how come we didn't call her. Her phone number's right there on the tag. Oh, hmm. Toby nodded. But he looked confused still. I swear, sometimes he's dumber than dirt. Come on, I motioned for Toby to follow me. We made our way through the woods behind the houses on Whitmore Road. I could hear the cars on the highway up ahead, so I was pretty sure we were going in the right direction. Willie trotted along beside me, happy as anything. 
Every now and then, he stopped to sniff the ground or root through the rotting leaves. Once he stopped to dig, sending dirt and leaves and flat twigs flying out behind him and making me and Toby laugh. He sure was a funny dog. When we got to the highway, I stooped down beside the, behind the bushes along the edge. I handed the string leash to Toby. Here, I said, hold this while I see if any cars are coming. I checked in both directions. No cars. I went back to where Toby sat with his arm around Willie. Okay, now listen, I said. We got to run across the highway and then through that vacant lot over there. I'm pretty sure we can cut through those woods and get to that old house. He nodded. I took the string from him and dashed across the highway with Willie leaping along beside me. We kept running until we made it to the edge of the gravel road leading to the old house. The whole time, Willie pranced and yipped and jumped up on me. Once in a while, he grabbed the string in his mouth and gave it a tug. When we got to the house, Willie perked his ears up and watched me. We're here, fella, I said, scratching the top of his head. He looked at that run-down, boarded-up house and then back at me. I had a feeling I knew what he was thinking. It's okay, Willie, I said. You won't be here long, I promise. He cocked his head in that cute way of his. I don't know how he did it, but that little dog can make you love him just by looking at him. I sat down in the dusty road and put my arm around him. He crawled right into my lap and licked my face. His licks weren't all slobbery like most dogs. It's spooky here, Toby said in a whiny voice. I knew if I didn't do something fast, he was liable to turn into his baby self and start crying or something. You hold Willie and I'll make a path for the back of the porch. I'll make a path to the back porch, I said. I pushed through the sticker bushes and vines, mashing them down and breaking off branches till there was a clear path to the back of the house. It was dark and damp back there. You couldn't even see the sky through the overgrown trees. The tiny porch leaned slightly, like any minute it was going to fall right off the back of the house. The steps leading up to it were loose and rotten. One of them was broken all the way through. The screen door dangled by one hinge. Come on, I called to Toby. He and Willie came around the corner of the house and stopped. No way, Georgina, Toby said. We cannot put Willie in there. Listen, Toby, I said. This is the best place. Nobody will see him. He won't get wet if it rains. And besides, he won't be here long. I watched Toby's face, but he didn't look convinced. And we'll come and stay with him after school and all that, I added. Toby swiped the tears that had started. You're mean, he said. Ugh, darn, why did he have to go and say that? I sure didn't want to hear it, because that was exactly how I was feeling. Mean. Toby, listen. I put both hands on his shoulders and looked him square in the eye. Aren't you tired of living in the car? He hung his head and nodded a tiny bit. Don't you want to have a real place to live with walls and beds and a bathroom and all? He nodded again. Then we need to help Mama get some money, I said, and this is the only thing I can think of. Can you think of another way? I bent down and tried to look him in the eye again, but his head was hanging too low. All I could see was his long, dirty hair, all tangled up and ratty looking. Then we've got to do this. I said, we'll take good care of Willie and we'll take him right back home just as soon as we can. And then we'll get the reward money and everything will be okay. I jiggled Toby's shoulders. Okay, I added. I knew Toby didn't believe me because I wasn't sure I believed myself. The old tapping feeling was getting bigger and in my head I was thinking maybe I was messing up. And I was starting to think about how I wished I could go back in time to the hour before or the day before, or the week before, but I knew I couldn't do that. I was there behind that awful old, old house with that cute little dog looking at me, and I knew it was up to me to plan something. It was up to me to make everything turn around good, like I had planned. I took the string leash from Toby and led Willie up the creaky steps to the porch. This isn't too bad. I called out to Toby. The top half of the porch had been screened in once, but now... What was left of the rusty old screen hung in tatters. Leaves and pine needles had blown in and covered the floor, settling in the corners in damp, moldy piles. I pushed some of the wet leaves down, trying to make a clean spot. Then I knelt down and took Willie's head in my both of my hands. Don't be scared, okay, I said. We'll be back real soon, and everything will be fine. 
Then I rubbed my nose back and forth against his. An Eskimo kiss. Willie rested his chin in my hands and gazed up at me like he believed every word I said. What if he gets hungry? Toby called from the bottom of the steps. Hungry! Oh, I hadn't even thought about that. I couldn't believe Toby was thinking up something else I had left out of my how to seal a dog notes. I said, what if he gets hungry? Toby called out. I've got all that worked out. I lied. My mind racing, tried to think of how I was going to feed Willie. And what if I couldn't get back here every day? How long could a dog go without food? And water, Toby said. Dogs need water. You know, he might die if he doesn't have water. Shut up, Toby. That's all I could think of to say, and it did the trick. He shut up. But it didn't help me feel any better. I tied the string to the doorknob and said goodbye to Willie. Then I led the way back to the weeds and briar bushes toward the road. I was glad Toby was quiet as we walked because I had a lot of thinking to do about water and food for Willie, about what I'd done, and about what to do next. But it was hard to get through, hard to get my thoughts all straightened out with my insides kicking up like they were. That tapping feeling was turning into a full out banging. <laughs>